What's up all my diving nerds and welcome back to some freezing cold diving. That's right. Me and my dive buddies, we have this annual tradition where we go diving in the winter time. That means dry suits only. We try to pretend like that's going to be good enough, but it's not. We freeze every single time, but it's a tradition. What are you going to do? I actually missed it last year because I tore my Achilles. So I said, this year, I'm going. And I was not disappointed. <laughs> and just, let's just take a quick look at the dive profile here. Um, normally, I'll look at pressure, but uh, you know, this time we're going to look at temperature. You can see it got down to 46 degrees. That's very chilly in the water. Very chilly. Uh, actually, the dry suit is fine. Um, knock on wood, I've never had a leaky dry suit. But the type that I wear, it's it's uh, wet hands, wet 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 head. <laughs> um, yeah, the head is not so bad. In fact, the second dive I actually went with a skinny hood. Uh, but it's the hands. The hands are what get you. But let's just dive right into it. I'm gonna keep talking while we're going. Obviously, so this was down. Um, it turns out I am terrible in a dry suit. Uh, oh, there's the anal sauce. We gotta get some of that in there. That's about the only time you're gonna see me this whole time. This uh, this whole dive. Um, yeah. So, like I said in the intro, I tore my Achilles two days before I was supposed to do the uh, the dry suit. The, you know, the annual dry suit dive here. Last year, 2023. So I had not been in a dry suit for two years. These fish, these <laughs> these fish were cracking me up, man. They, so bold. They were very curious. Didn't care about nothing. They were right in your face. They're probably looking for something to munch on. You know, I don't know. I've, I've heard some of these fish will actually draw some blood occasionally. But if they nipped at me, I didn't feel it. You know, and I was covered head to toe anyway in a dry suit. So. But yeah, it's it was cool. It was cool. It was tough. The uh, I'm I'm gonna have to draw a diagram. I might take a time out to draw a diagram. Uh, my buoyancy was not good this entire day. Hey, fishy. Uh, the first dive especially, it was so bad that I was considering just sitting out in the second dive. I was underwater. I was working hard to like not sink and not float. And I was getting out of breath. And once I start getting out of breath, man, I'm just like, what am I doing here? You know, this is not supposed to be a workout. This is not supposed to be hard. I'm certainly not supposed to be scared about my life. <laughs> um, so when I start breathing hard underwater, it, it, it starts jogging something in my brain. It's like, what are you doing, idiot? Get out of here. You shouldn't be here. And I got to that point in this dive, not yet. We're not there yet. Uh, but there was definitely about 30 seconds on this first dive where I was like, I'm done. I'm not going on any more dives today. This is hurting too much. I don't know why. I don't know what's wrong with me. But I ended up pushing that feeling aside. I did go on two dives. And I'm glad we did not go for three because I probably wouldn't say that three. <laughs> I wasn't the only one. Yeah, I... Anyway, these are, these are my two dive buddies. Uh, well, you can't see them now. I'm looking at the boat. Uh, that's Terry on the right there. I got, I got a quick look, glimpse of him. And, uh, this is Tom on the left. I think. No, did I mix him up? Uh, no. Terry definitely had the blue tank and red fins. And Tom's in the yellow dry suit. Yeah, there you go. So these are one of... No, two of maybe three... My dive buddies will go cold and deep. Oh, bullet ball in my dome. Uh, well, well, my cousins, my my cousin and his wife, they are they're like doing tech diving, so they're definitely gonna go cold and deep. But I'm not counting them because they moved to Colorado and I don't see them ever anymore. <laughs> um, so homegrown local folks, anyway. Um, Terry on the right, Tom on the left, and there's another Tom, actually my ex-boss, uh, surprisingly enough. 
He goes cold too, although I've never seen him in a, in a dry suit, so he might just do cold wet suit. I don't know, but that's, that's Tom, then Tom on my left in the dry suit, Terry on my right in the dry suit, me in the dry suit. And, uh, it was tough, so at this point right here, I was struggling. I was really struggling, so we were playing with the bowling balls, we went through the bus, well, Tom went through the bus, I went to the side, I was feeling bad enough that I did not want to go through the bus. And by bad, I mean buoyancy. Uh, yeah, Terry, I know you're looking for a photo up here, sitting on the bench, I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> I was struggling right now to maintain my buoyancy, and I, I could feel my legs floating to the surface, so... If you guys don't know how a dry suit works, at least all the ones I've used, there's, there's different kinds, I think, but the basic principle is they seal off the water from your body. You know, big surprise. So it's basically a big plastic bag that you're wearing over your entire body, but you connect a hose to it from your regulator and you push a button, you can pump air into it. So it's basically a big plastic bag over your entire body that's got air in it and the air wants to float up and it doesn't care about anything else the air wants to float up and so it's easy for that air to get trapped in your legs and then before you know it your legs are floating to the surface and you're doing a nosedive except you're like going up and it's difficult man it's difficult if you got air trapped in your legs and your legs start floating it's difficult to bring your legs down and go vertical so that air can rise up from your legs up into your torso and that's where the exhaust valve is so here i'm not petting animals. this is the petting zoo of Mermaid springs i'm not petting animals i'm trying to keep myself from blasting to the surface because i got too much air in my dry suit and even worse than that i got too much air in the legs of my dry suit at least that's what it felt that's what it felt like the, the entire dives today I was trying to maintain buoyancy and failing spectacularly. Spectacularly. <laughs> Look at me. I I'm grabbing onto this rod, just trying to fix myself. I mean, even Tom. Tom is petting animals. I think Terry's over there petting animals somewhere. I'm. I'm trying to survive right now. <laughs> the entire dives today, we're trying to survive. And this is only like nine feet deep, and it it's. I, mean, I think I mentioned. It. I. I don't know. I'm. I'm gonna coin this term in the diving world. You got a Goldilocks zone of buoyancy when you're underwater. And what you're trying to do is maintain neutral buoyancy. So, and that, what I mean by that is when you go under, any air on you compresses and the volume decreases. And as you go up, the pressure decreases, the volume of your air increases expands and you start to float up so what I mean by Goldilocks zone is there's a zone when you're underwater and it varies by depth certainly where you're neutrally buoyant and that's where you want to live or if you take in a deep breath you got enough air volume expansion in you that you rise up you spell it you sink but there's a zone there, so if you like put too much air in your BCD and you go above the ceiling, it'll start to accelerate upward. If you dump too much air, and even if you take in a breath, you still don't have enough air, and if you hit that floor, you accelerate downward. And so you want to maintain between the accelerate downward and accelerate upward. I mean, that's your goal pretty much when you're diving. That's a big part of it. And I don't know why necessarily, but it seems like, at least in my experience, when you have a dry suit on, that zone shrinks by a lot. So your ceiling comes down, your floor comes up, and you have a very small space where you can remain neutrally buoyant. And today, I was fighting that all day. I, I was either dumping air to go down or pumping air to stay up. I was not comfortable um, for most of the dives. I did get better by the second one, I felt like, but still a far cry from like, I, I've done so many dives in a wetsuit, and I feel like I'm really locked into a wetsuit. My points is pretty good. I even know where to distribute the weights on myself. Today was a lot of guesswork. Uh, I, do, I do not own a dry suit. 
They're very expensive. At least they can be. Uh, Terry actually got one in the used market for very cheap. I don't know how he, what, he spent like 100 bucks or something. That's crazy. <laughs> I don't know how he got a dry suit for $100. It might have been a little more than that, but uh, I mean, you can easily, easily spend $1,500 on a dry suit. I, I feel like that's where some of them start. It just goes up from there. And I just, that's a lot of money. You know, I don't want to spend that much. <laughs> So, I rent a dry suit every time, but um, I felt like I kind of reached a happy medium or a good compromise. Uh, I bought some undergarments. Undergarments are expensive too, so I spent $300 on undergarments, but they were on sale. It was a President's Day sale, and normal cost for everything I got, which was pants, shirt, Socks. Yeah, see, hold on. Time out. So I'm grabbing on this tree right now. I'm so out of whack in my buoyancy. I'm trying to grab something so I can force my legs down. And when you get air trapped in your legs, it is very difficult to like... And now I'm just crawling down the tree just to get down. <laughs> I was so handsy this dive in the next one. I, I've never touched and held on to so many things as I did today. And, uh, that's, I don't know, it, it was like, I, I'm probably 120 dives in my career. I have to check my logbook. But today felt like dive number two. I mean, it was that clunky in the water. I couldn't get my buoyancy right. Different parts of me were floating and sinking. The trim was, by that I mean the trim was terrible. I just, this rope right here, look, you can tell, you can see me sinking right here. I mean, this rope saved my life on this dive. It was at this point where I was really considering not going on a second dive. I was so miserable. I was out of breath, trying to contort my body to balance me. Did you hear that? I, mean, I, I was struggling. I, I don't remember exactly what was going on there, but I think I was breathing in heavy. Oh. Yeah, at this point I was so pissed. I didn't even want to be here. <laughs> I don't even know where this rope goes. I should know. Over half my dives have been at Mermet. Uh, is this cabin cruiser? Uh, it might be. Uh, we got down to about 35, maybe 40 feet. And then I think Tom had some prop equalizing, and that was a huge blessing. <laughs> I was so ready to be done with this. We, we just kept going a little deeper and a little deeper. And I'm like, man, I just, I don't have, I was not, I was not comfortable. I just was not comfortable. With it. And, uh, yeah, I don't have the dive profile in front of me. I'd have to switch off the video to see it. But I think that we were doing it. Uh, I mean, I think we didn't get much deeper than 35 feet, maybe 40 we turned right around. We, we did not we did not do the normal Mermet Springs things like go to the plane, go to the train car, go to the mail truck, go to the cabin cruiser. We didn't do any of that. It, it was just, man, I don't know. It, it just felt menacing to keep going deeper. <laughs> I'm glad we didn't. I actually am glad we didn't. Uh, hold on, I'm sorry, my wires are banging in my microphone right now. Um, this, this was also a case of I did not know the camera was on. I, I do not normally shoot seven minute long segments. Uh, yeah, the camera was kind of least in my mind. I, I was worried about survival at this point. Um, but man, shout out to Terry. Terry's buoyancy was great all day. From what I could see, um, yeah, he was just this was great all day. I was so jealous. <laughs> I'm over here hanging onto the wall so I don't, you know, plunge to my death or pop to the surface and explode like a coke. And Terry was just even keel the whole day. I don't, I don't think I saw him grab anything all day. And then uh, even Tom, Tom had, I think, a little trouble. He, we had some trouble equalizing right here, which I did too. That first dive, I had a lot of trouble equalizing. My left ear, it's always my left ear. I don't know why. Terry 
So he says it's one of those special specimens that can just like wiggle his jaw or something and his ears open up. Yeah, that's not me. I gotta hold my nose and I gotta blow hard. Um, my right, my right ear clears right up. I, I've never had any problems with my right ear. It's always my left one. And it's uh, yeah, I've learned to stay patient with it. I hold my nose and blow. Sometimes it'll take like 10 plus seconds for my left ear and I'll like gotta contort my neck or something, you know, sometimes I'll like point my ear up. I, I've got pretty good at knowing when it's coming. Uh, but man, it's a struggle every time. Every single time it's a struggle to clear that left ear. And um, yeah, it was, it was feeling some pain today. Uh, I don't know why. I think it's cold weather or the cold water, probably. Cause I was diving not that long. Oh, you see that hook on right there? That was, <laughs> yeah, some random string of my flashlight got hooked on the on the uh, handle for Terry's weights. I'm like, man, I'm so glad I looked over there and, and saw what was going on. Cause if I just yanked that and ripped his weights out, that would have been bad news bears. I mean, I don't know from where we are right now how deep it goes, but it's probably a lot deeper than we are now, and that would have been a terrible, terrible search and recovery. <laughs> so, thank goodness that I looked over there and uh, just unhooked, just unhooked it. That was a crisis averted, trust me. I don't think Terry really knows what happened, but he will when he watches this. <laughs> Yeah, this line saved my life. I, I was, man, I was hurting. I just couldn't. Uh, two videos ago, that seven minute segment where I didn't even know the camera was on. I was, uh, man, I was struggling just to survive. That rope was my frame of reference. And normally you're supposed to just watch it, you know, maybe do a finger circle around it. I was grabbing that thing. I was. I mean, that's how bad it was. That's how bad it was for me today. Um, in my defense, you know, I haven't been in a dry suit in over two years, but I don't know. It just hurt. It just hurt today. Um, yeah, I got, uh, so I got, uh, I probably mentioned it if you watched my, my, my Miami video. I got undergarments and new fins. Yeah, I felt like the undergarments were a pretty good compromise because, like I said before, dry suits can get crazy expensive, thousands and thousands of dollars. And I just don't dry suit dive. I dry suit dive once a year. Yeah, I just, you know, it makes no sense to me. I mean, if I got it, I'd probably use it more than that. It, there is something to be said about getting out of the water and you're totally dry. That's pretty cool. <laughs> you know. Except for my hands and head, but you can definitely get dry gloves. And I don't know. There's, there's probably dry hoods. I don't know. I don't know. Um, oh, good air. But it's. Uh, what was I talking about? Something you said for. Well, I totally lost my train of thought, but, um, yeah, it was tough. It was tough with the, uh, it's just too cold in the dry suit. Yeah, was I talking about dry suits? I think I was talking about dry suits. Um, yeah, it just changes your whole buoyancy up. I don't know, and, like... Whether or not you're supposed to use your dry suit, your dry suit for buoyancy, uh, it depends on who you ask. I think the official Patty book. I'd have to look back at it, but I think the official book says no. Use your BCD. Uh, while I was taking the dry suit class, I think the instructor said, "Sure, if you want to use it for buoyancy, go ahead." I have tended not to use it for buoyancy. You know, it's an airspace, so, so when you go down, you feel, it's called the squeeze. You feel the squeeze as the pressure, you know, builds around you and starts squeezing the airspaces. Uh, when you're in a wetsuit, 
There are no air spaces, so it doesn't matter. But in a dry suit, your entire body is in air space. And so you go down, you feel the squeeze, and there's a valve that you can push on your chest to pump some air into your dry suit. But I've learned you want to do that very minimally. Minimally? I think so. The reason being... Because the air doesn't, it's not an even distribution of air throughout your entire suit. <laughs> you know, air wants to float. So you pump some air in and it goes to the highest point that it can find. And if you even got a slight angle in your legs, it goes to your legs. And if you're not watching out. You got a whole bunch of air in your legs, you're inverted, and you're floating to the surface. You're you're above the ceiling of the Goldilocks zone. Hold on, I gotta check my playlist. Oh wow, we still got a lot to go. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty short from here on out. Well, we got a minute forty-two, minute forty. Man, I take too many videos. You know that. I ran out of things to say too. You know, I was doing, uh, if you guys watch my, Di my uh, Disney videos. It's easy now to talk during those because you got so much sound around, my friends talking, but man, when you're underwater, there's nothing but bubble sounds and uh, this song is going to give me a copyright strike, so I got to keep talking. You know? <laughs> there's no ambient sound to take the place. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't even know where we were at this point. I, my sense of direction is just like non-existent. It really is. I've taken the uh, well. I took advanced open water. I've not taken the navigation cert. I think there's an actual navigation cert. Oh, there's a bicycle. Yeah, so there, there's these bicycles buried around our map. I think they even got like scavenger hunts for them or something. But I don't think they ever change position, so it's like you probably do it one, maybe two times, and once you learn everything, you're probably back where you started. <laughs> oh, I was freaking out here. So that placard says to the train car. Tom's lights kind of kind of uh blurring it out. Or, uh, what's the word? Washing it out. There you go. <laughs> and I thought Terry was pointing at that. And Tom are like, let's go to the train car. And I was, oh, I was, I did not want to go to the train. So the train car is about 65 feet deep. It's very cold. I think the source of the spring is down there somewhere. Although this time of year, you know, whatever, I, the lake turns over. So I think the surface water is actually colder than at the depth. Uh, Yeah, it, 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 I thought they were saying, let's go to the train car. And I'm just like, no, I do not want to go to the train car. It's too deep. It's too dark. It's too cold. I barely survived the uh, the rope race, the rope track, you know, no, no uh, deeper than 30 feet. But no, it's not what they were saying. I think I don't know what they were doing. I, I think Terry was just like pointing up and saying, "Here's the rope to the platform," because this is the next frame. So Terry just goes sits on the platform. <laughs> That's Terry taking a breather. Um, yeah, I was so relieved when we did not go to the train car because I really thought that's where they wanted to go. <laughs> Man, I can't do it. I can't. I can't do it. Uh, man, hold on. Uh, look at these fish. Yeah, so these fish were freaking everywhere on the platform. Uh, I don't... I think the only time I've ever seen this many fish is like October, maybe? Many years ago? I mean... So I guess this is the advantage of coming at this time of year. Look at this. Look at all these fish. 
you come here in like May, June, July when all the classes are here and you ain't gonna see these fish, man. Not like this. I don't think. I've never seen them that time of year anyway. So this was pretty cool, getting swarmed by these fish. And I have no idea what they are. I, somebody tell me what they are in the comments. I don't know fish at all. Uh, at least not these. <laughs> the one with the uh, underbites looked like grouper to me, except, you know, like a thousand times smaller. I think grouper can get the size of a car, you know, or VW bug or something like that. But they got the same kind. Yeah, this one. Or no, wait, no, not that one. Not that one. Not that one. Uh, that one. That one. Can you see where I'm pointing? <laughs> you cannot. The ones with the big underbites. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. I feel like that one. Yeah, the top. Just top left there. I feel like those are. Those look like grouper. <laughs> and they're most definitely not grouper. Uh, Alright, I was feeling better, man. I, so anytime I start picking up toys and start playing with them, then I'm obviously not, uh... Yeah, this one sitting on the bottom here. This looks like a grouper. <laughs> Baby grouper. But when I start picking up fake alligators and start chasing fish, fish with them, uh, I'm, fe I'm feeling better. <laughs> when I was following that rope a couple seconds ago, a few seconds ago, uh, down to the depths, I would not be picking up fake alligators and chasing fish with them, so... And we only got a few left. Oh, hey, fishy, fishy. Um, oh, yeah, here's the golf. Here's the putter. Is this the one? I was teaching a fish how to putt at one of these points, at one of these uh, dives. I, I can't remember. Is this one or the next one? <laughs> it might have been the next one. Nope, it's this one. Look at him. He's very. He's, he's checking it out. How do you putt? Uh, oh, well. Small attention span. I took a screenshot of that. It looks like the fish is very intent on learning how to putt. <laughs> Look at them. They're, they're following us to the next platform. Very curious fellas. And they were only on the platforms, man. We leave the platform, no fish. Very few fish. It was weird. I mean, except for the spoonbills. Uh, which I did see some spoonbills later. Uh, I got terrible footage of them, but I did see some spoonbills. Uh, man, how much longer we got to go? I'm ready to wrap this up, man. I, I like watching videos and talking, but I, I'm even running out of things to say here. Um, I'm sure you guys can tell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is funny. Tom picked up the video camera and was recording me as I was recording him. Yeah. <laughs> that looks like a video camera straight from uh, the Goldbergs. You guys watch that show? Man, I... I, I always I saw a few episodes a few years ago and thought it was too corny. I'm like, this is dumb. But man, I watched a few more. It's really grown on me. That's a pretty good show. That is a pretty good show. You guys should watch the Goldbergs. It's, uh, it's hard to believe there was like a family like that or a mom that was that aggressive, you know. Alright, here we are at the end of dive number one. Uh, thank goodness we survived. One more coming up. Stay tuned for it. It's a different world on the surface. Entirely different. See you at the next one.